Coming up on Small Town Big Deal. Did a big yawn. We're in puppy heaven as Christmas comes early for a special organization that trains service dogs for veterans in need. Oh, food? Yes. The surprise gift hidden inside this truck. Oh, sweet. That will help ensure America's heroes have the perfect sanctuary for healing. Then, wow. There's no match for what you'll see from this creative master. Over two years in the making, about a half a million matchsticks, more than 10 gallons of wood glue. Hey! Right. Are you ready? Come on. Here we go. Are you ready? Welcome to Small Town Big Deal. I'm Rodney Miller. And I'm Jan Carl. You know, it's not often that we get to go back to one of the places where we've done a story before. That's right, but we are so impressed with the work of Warrior Canine Connection. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that we wanted to share more of their story. And one of our partners is so impressed that they've decided to give an amazing gift. Shh, it's a secret. There it goes, the special delivery on its way with the help of our guest correspondent from Bad Boy Moors, Mallory Lindsay. My life is complete now. It is such an honor to support Warrior Canine Connection, or WCC for short. Ricky Out founded this amazing organization in 2011 that trains puppy platoons who will one day serve our recovering warriors. They will help relieve the psychological injuries of PTSD and the impact of traumatic brain injury. Best place ever. Right now, WCC has two sets of adorable deliveries. Oh my goodness. This litter is three weeks old. That's the snuggle command. While these precious pups are just three days old. Their eyes aren't open. The only thing that's really working is their sense of touch and smell. A lot of things for them to learn right now, and the most important thing is just to trust humans. WCC breeds their own dogs to ensure the highest quality pups possible, and they use only Labradors and Golden Retrievers because historically they make the best service dogs. They're strong, they're very connected with humans, and they live a relatively long life for a large dog. You know, some of our dogs have made it 15 and a half, 16 years old. When you're engaged with these puppies, it's changing your chemistry. It's releasing the anti-stress hormones. Well, it's been proven that these dogs are very capable of changing how you feel. WCC has their healing headquarters in Boyds, Maryland, about a half hour from Washington, D.C. The grounds are beautiful and sprawling, the perfect peaceful setting to aid in a veteran's recovery. But the size presents one big problem. So WCC sits on 80 acres of state parkland, and they have to mow about 17 acres of it. That's an enormous job for veteran Tim O'Boyle. And this old mower breaks down more often than not. So when Jan and Rodney contacted Bad Boy Mowers and told us that the WCC is spending more time repairing their mower than actually mowing, we knew exactly how we could help. I think another special delivery is here. Now, I know you've had a lot of trouble with this mower. Yes. We might have a solution for you. Tim's job is about to get a whole lot easier. That's because Warrior Canine Connection is about to become the proud new owner of some classic American muscle. Our partners at Bad Boy Mower are gifting them a brand new top of the line mower. Now, before the big reveal though, we want to go over a little bit more about what makes WCC so very special. Down. Good. Yes. During our first visit, we discovered how Warrior Canine Connection has a unique program called Mission-Based Trauma Recovery. Yes. It's building on the warrior ethos that is a strong part of the military culture, which is take care of your own. Veterans who they themselves are struggling with PTSD are asked to help train dogs for fellow veterans in need. This training mission becomes therapy for them, helping with their own healing. 
Many are dealing with survivor's guilt. They're so focused on punishing themselves that it's hard to help them. Sometimes you have to focus on what they can do to help out another, another veteran. You know, it's hard to feel guilty while you're doing something to help somebody. It takes two years to train a dog before it's placed with a veteran, but as many as 60 veterans are positively impacted by assisting in the process. We're nearing 6,000 veterans who wow. participated in our mission-based trauma recovery program, and with their help, we've been able to place over 110 dogs as service dogs. Now, salute, yes! These clever canines learn 70 to 80 commands. They can turn on a light yes. or pick up a cane. They can even help put on their own harnesses. Dress. Perfect. Yes. That's it. That's it. But their skills reach far deeper than that. They can help calm a veteran who is suffering from night terrors or help manage the stress of a veteran who feels uncomfortable in a public situation, such as going out to dinner. Hi. Hi. Maya Roos shows us how when we meet her and her husband, Greg, at a veteran-owned restaurant. Maya first volunteered at WCC and now has her own service dog, Buff. Could you share with me some of the activities or skill sets she does? Totally. So she does a lot to like break up my hands if I'm cracking my knuckles or fidgeting around as she puts her nose on it. So that way I'm petting her instead of being fidgety with my hands. If I bounce my leg, she'll bring in her head to kind of weigh it down. And if you don't stop, she kind of gets heavier and heavier with time. That's a good girl. Sarah, let me ask you this. What are some of the changes that you see when a veteran comes to help train dogs, like Maya did? I think the biggest change is their confidence. And it's not like looking at the trainer and being like, am I doing this right? It's like, nope, I'm going to take this dog on and out into Mission Barbecue by myself, and we're going to rock it. Still ahead, the selfless oh, sacrifice made oh, by puppy parents. So how is it when you've had this dog for two years and you have to give it up? And will Rodney ride off with their surprise present? I'm never going to get that bad boy back. You're watching Small Town Big Deal. Welcome back to Small Town Big Deal at Warrior Canine Connection. This special organization provides therapy dogs to help veterans recover from the stress of combat and reconnect with civilian life. And there's Mama, yeah. It takes an army to get these new recruits ready for action. For a service dog that's going out into the world and flying on planes and riding on buses and going to the malls and everywhere that they go, it's a lot of responsibility for our staff and our volunteers to get these guys started off on the right paw. <laughs> Good job. School librarian Celeste Deem serves a vital role in the process as a volunteer puppy parent. This is Dorothy. She's named after Captain Dorothy Ryan from the Navy Nurse Corps. Okay. All the puppies are named after veterans. As you can see, she is a very busy girl. <laughs> Dorothy is the fifth pup Celeste has had the privilege to raise. What's it like to be a puppy parent? Oh, it is nonstop. <laughs> it is super rewarding. I mean, we bring home a new puppy and potty train them and teach them household manners, which we're probably better at doing with the dogs at this point than with our own children. <laughs> Celeste will serve as Dorothy's mom until her big day arrives, when WCC graduates are placed in their forever homes. So how is it when you've had this dog for two years and you have to give it up? You know, it's sad, but that's the goal. Like, if you can raise this dog and work through all their quirks and make them successful to be able to give them to somebody who needs them, that's the reward. That's what you want. Car. And WCC oh, wants to help as many veterans as possible. Good. That's why their program is expanding across America. We're operating out of the Palo Alto VA Hospital, the San Francisco VA Hospital, out in Colorado at the Denver area. We're down in Asheville, North Carolina. We're working with the Veterans Treatment Courts around the country now. And as WCC grows, we want to make sure veteran Tim O'Boyle and his service dog Sandy can keep their headquarters in Boyds, Maryland, the perfect sanctuary they need it to be. Tim served in Iraq and Afghanistan, and his desire to serve his country and his fellow veterans 
runs deep. He's deeply committed to making the property a welcoming place for continued healing, as it is for him. I can't be the soldier that I used to be. Now I can just do my part. This is my little, my little section that I can handle. You have to find that next thing to help out with. And now it's time to help out Tim. Oh, sweet. <laughs> Bad Boy Mowers representative Don Cook presents the cutting edge solution to Tim's tall task. Renegade is top of the line for Bad Boy Mowers. 35 horse engine, Vanguard in the back, 72 inch deck, full four point suspension. Got a suspension seat also, keep everything comfortable while you're out having fun. <laughs> You'll keep looking for more grass to mow. I mean, this baby is smooth. They had to spend quite a bit of money in our old mower here lately, which it's rough when you're a nonprofit. <laughs> so, yeah, this is going to be huge. This is Tim's new Zen spot. <laughs> Tim is reserved and a bit shy, but off camera, he told us when he saw this bad boy renegade mower, it was like the best Christmas morning ever. After 10 minutes of begging, Tim's finally gonna let me drive this bad boy. Here we go. I'm never gonna get that bad boy back. It warms the heart to know that Tim can really rock his job now. At Bad Boy Mowers, we mow with an attitude. We also have an attitude of gratitude for all of our service members and veterans and first responders. It is an honor to be able to help Warrior Canine Connection with their important mission. And as a way to say thank you to all veterans and first responders, through the Bad Boys of America Zero Turns for Heroes program, you can save up to 25% on all qualifying Bad Boy Mowers. Just go to badboymowers.com to learn more. I want to thank the Bad Boy family for everything you guys have done. The veterans and the dogs and everybody will appreciate this. Thank you. If you'd like to help Warrior Canine Connection, just visit their website to make a tax-deductible gift. And if you are a veteran who is struggling or know of a veteran who is, please call the Veterans Crisis Line by dialing 988, then press 1. <gasps> Coming up next... Notre Dame. Find out what you can do with a 40-year hobby and 7 million matchsticks. Welcome back to Small Town Big Deal. Jan and I have opened up our archives to show you a really unusual example of a big deal in a small town. And we guarantee your eyes will be glued to this story. We're in the small town of Gladbrook, Iowa, population only 787, and about an hour's drive northeast of Des Moines. The big deal here, these unique creations. What makes them so unique? They're all made out of matchsticks. You'd be hard pressed to find anyone who can match Pat Acton's passion for his favorite pastime. Now a retired career counselor, Pat built his first matchstick building in 1977, a small church. To say building that church ignited a hobby for Pat is an understatement. Wow. The USS Nimitz. I was shocked when I came into this place because the pictures of Pat's creations, they don't do them justice. When you see the Wright Brothers Flyer, the Challenger Space Shuttle, and the magnificent U.S. Capitol, it's easy to see why Pat calls this his hobby gone mad that is now a full-time job. Over two years in the making, about a half a million matchsticks more than 10 gallons of wood glue. Half a million matchsticks? Really? And I gotta say, a whole lot of patience. Did you have some drawings to go off of? Or? Well, I was waiting actually for somebody to show up on my doorstep seeing why I was on the, the Capitol website so much. So much. Yeah. Excuse me, sir, you have some explaining to do. Exactly. Homeland Security. Yeah. <laughs> When you've got the full-time job and you're doing 2,000 hours on this, what is your wife saying to yeah. you? I'm kind of curious. Well, she knows where I am. <laughs> I'm in the, okay, well, there you I'm go. I'm in the shop. If you feel like Pat's work is unbelievable, you're not the only ones. For years, Ripley's Believe It or Not has been commissioning work from him. They have 25 of his creations displayed around the world. One of the most popular, totaling about 600,000 matchsticks, is Hogwarts Castle from Harry Potter fame. <gasps> oh, 
Notre Dame. I don't you know if you've noticed, but I love architecture, too. Yeah. So I just want to test our architectural knowledge. Sure. Do you know what these things are right here that are coming out here? Flying buttresses. See, she knows everything about everything. Mm, I can't to even stop trick me. her on anybody. Trying to stop me. Look at the little shingles. They, well, they look like the little ends of the matchstick. That's exactly is what they are. Is that what they are? are? That's exactly what they are. In addition to Pat, there is another big deal here in Gladbrook. It's the community and how they came together to create Matchstick Marvels, a museum to display Pat's work. And this facility was built and by volunteers. It's strictly volunteer operated and it was a community effort. I was trying to find a place to keep all the models and uh, retain them in Iowa and the local people said this is too good to, to get, oh, let go. Yeah, well, that's the epitome yeah. of small town that's America right. too. Yeah, I mean, really that, everybody came together. Symbolizes everything we do every week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Since I'm such a history buff, my favorite piece of the museum was the USS Iowa. Do you get a lot of veterans that come here to look at this too? We do, we do. And I get a lot of uh, remarks from people that have served on the yeah. Iowa or the Iowa class ships. So they can say, I worked in this yeah, area. They, that's exactly the type of thing they do. Through the years, Pat's come up with a lot of techniques to form the matchsticks to just the shape he needs. Pat Wallaco, you said you built these in your basement. Can we go see that? Yeah, that'd be a great idea. And then could maybe Jan and I build something? Ooh, that'd be fun. Something small. Maybe a little competition? competition. I think I got this one, because I'm really good at woodworking. Matchstick 101? Let's I'm ready. It. I'm ready to go to class. Let's do it. You're going to see my creation and weep. Oh, I'm off to a great start. I think I'm ahead. I already have, like, 50 done. You're right. Let's just say it's going to be a big deal. Looks like time's up. Farm boy makes a wooden fence. A farm fence. I wanted to do something that I thought was a big deal. So. Oh, not? yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Will the real creator please hold the creation? <laughs> <laughs> so the truth comes out. I know, but we couldn't resist. Since our original visit, Pat's been on fire. He estimates his hands have crafted more than 7 million matchsticks into finely detailed models. Here's just some of the marvels he's created. The One World Trade Center, a two-headed dragon with wings that flap, the International Space Station, a two-thirds size Fast and Furious Dodge Charger, the Millennium Falcon with retractable landing gear, a true-to-life-size Mars rover, and Pat's largest model to date, a steampunk locomotive. And a hint for what Pat's working on next? Well, we'll have to come back in the future to see it. We'll be right back. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Small Town Big Deal. I gotta tell you, Pat, since the last time we were at Matchstick Marvels, he, his stuff has just gone off the charts. He's been, I won't say he's gone crazy, but in a good way. <laughs> and Warrior Canine Connection. I mean, you love the dog stories. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and I love what they're doing to help our veterans. And yeah. Bad Boy Mowers, too, with their attitude of gratitude and all they do for veterans. Mm, Tim is a really one happy camper now. <laughs> oh, now that he's got that Bad Boy Renegade, and now that you've gotten off of his Bad Boy Renegade, he's very happy. I'm Rodney Miller. And I'm Jan Carl. Join us again next week when, once again, we celebrate the great stories from across America. It takes uh, about two years on average for a dog to reach maturity and get to the point where they can be placed as a service dog. That's great. You know, and the fact you can train him in two years, because I've been working with Jan for 10 years and I'm still <laughs> way not to that level. He stole my line. <laughs> I can't uh, pass her off yet. But... Must take an incredible amount of patience. <laughs>